disappointed um, in our performance today for those 16 seniors that we honored uh, before the game. You know, I thought from top to bottom, uh, we need to be better. I expected us to be. You know, I have high expectations for this team, and, and you know, I'm not going to lower my expectations. Uh, we're better than what we're showing on Saturdays each and every week, and uh, it's my job as the head coach to figure out a way to make sure we play to our uh, standard. You know, we'll continue to identify guys in our program that give great effort and doing things the right way as we you know, continue to build and the guys that will be a part of our future. Uh, we have one more opportunity next week against Michigan State. And again, my expectation is for us to go out and do the best job we could possibly do to send our seniors out a, a winner, uh, send them out with a win. Um, we'll get to work immediately. We're trying to get this taste out of our mouth um, and try to build some momentum as we head into the offseason. So with that, I'll open it up to some questions. Jackler's Law Group clients are happy clients, and here's why. Our lawyers are experienced, hardworking professionals who fight until you win, and you pay no fees until we do. If you've been injured in a car, truck, or train crash, we meet you where you are and when you can. If you've been in a crash, don't wait. Call the big dogs now. Let us handle the insurance company so you can focus on healing, and you'll see why we were named the best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country. CAG Federal brings a combination of military operational and commercial business experience to your organization. We mix extraordinary organizational management experience with strong leadership skills to provide your department with the best chance for success. When 99.9 percent .9 reliability isn't good enough, call CAG Federal at 877-797-8776 or on the web at cagfederal.com. Mike, given the two weeks you had to prepare and the fact that it was senior day, would you say that this is the low point of the season? Uh, definitely. For me, it is. Um, you know, we had 16 seniors that have been through a lot uh, during their time here. And for us to not play to our ability, you know, we had a couple of weeks to prepare for it. Um, you know, the thing that continues to, to sit in my craw is the fact that it's us hurting us. I mean, we had four turnovers. Four fumbles. We had a bunch of uh, penalties there on special teams, which kind of broke the back of our team and our momentum early in the game. And just you don't win games when you beat yourself. And you know, I'll keep saying it. When we learn to not beat ourselves first, that's when we'll start turning the corner and get back to the winning football that we need to play. Um, what, what were they doing, or what were you doing to yourselves that, that kept you from getting into an offensive rhythm, um, even with kind of shuffling around quarterbacks? I don't know if you saw, but we had a bunch of fumbles. I mean, early, often, um, it's hard to get in a rhythm when you turn the ball over to them and you give them the opportunities we gave them, especially in the first quarter. And I think we had the penalty on the punt where, you know, we have a return set up. The player decides to go try to block a punt, leaps the wedge, which is illegal, uh, gives them another set of downs. I think we had 18 plays. So it's hard to get in a rhythm on offense when you don't have the ball and when you're turning it over. I thought our defense played well enough early in the game, but the other two phases were, weren't very good. Mike, what's the status of your quarterbacks? I know all, all three of them got injured. Uh, are they okay or what's, what's up? Yeah, I haven't had a chance to you know, talk, obviously, to our, uh, our medical staff yet. Obviously, Lance left the game um, with upper body injury, some type of shoulder, I think. Um, Piggy had a lower body injury. Um, you know, Josh has been nicked up, but he finished the game for us. Tyler and Sue was in, uh, he's fine. So I'll get a lot more information once we probably get done with this. But going into it, I know Lance left and couldn't come back. And I know Piggy had a lower body injury that didn't allow him to come back. Andy Coach, uh, didn't see Teofi Davis, uh, yeah. Davis at running back. Do you have an update on something? Yeah, we held him out of today's game. Um, you know, it was a non football reason, non football issue. Um, he's still practicing with us. and. You still come to meetings, but uh, I held him out for an off football issue. To your right, Cornell. Uh, Coach, what did you see early in the game that made you decide to switch to Lance LeGron, LeGron early? LeJean. LeJean. Yeah. 
Um, we had already planned on doing it. You know, we had a package of plays that were built into our opening 15 scripted plays that we do. You know, we had two games remaining that we could utilize, uh, and he still maintained a red shirt. And so uh, the plan was to play him, uh, to see how he could play, and see see how he would do in game situations. And so uh, he had a good week. Put a lot of uh, plays and things in for his package, so it was disappointing. Uh, when he went out with the injury, but I thought he did some good things the short time he was out there. Mike, were you expecting the short kickoffs? Uh, to and, and and why do you think uh, Javon had such a difficult time with it? Um, not necessarily short kickoffs. We we knew that most people don't want to kick the ball to number twenty uh, because of his big playability as a returner. Um, and, and so once we saw what there. Uh, their design or scheme was this week. We made the adjustment. I thought was the first one when Javon fumbled and didn't get to the ball, um, just had to get to the ball, see it kick quicker and make quicker decisions. But I thought, you know, going into the game, we always we anticipated that they wouldn't kick the ball to him. And then it took us, you know, after one or two kicks to kind of put together a plan to be able to, one, get to the football and make sure that we cheated our guys up and communication could be a little better. And then two, design some ways to try to block it up to, to allow him to have opportunity to make a play, which he's capable of. Have they shown that against anybody else? They had. They had not. Andy, to your left. When you look at the tape, or when you digest this game a little bit, in what aspects will you stand out to you most? And I guess what do you try to fix uh, primarily going into the Shane State? Uh, the turnovers, turnovers, uh, the turnovers kind of stand out the most to me. You know, we knew it was a wet ball game. We practiced wet balls. We understood that it was most likely going to rain, and we didn't maintain control of it. You know, they did a good job. Give them credit, Nebraska credit, putting their helmets on the ball. But you know, just the fumbles, um, the inability to throw the football just continues to just you know, kind of piss me off a little bit. That we just you know can't execute, whether it's protection, quarterback decision making, pitching and catching. You know, a couple of times we had some. You know, late balls, high balls, some guys open. We had to drop, you know, on a, a big, t a big play down the field. So, you know, the passing game to me is something that we've got to, you know, to create the balance that we need to play with. That's where I think a lot of whether it's on offense and defense, that we've got to make our biggest improvement. Thank you, coach. Well, four players in here momentarily.